Okay, the galaxy is coming in two flavors, um, elliptical galaxies and disk galaxies. Our own galaxy, Milky Way, belongs to the latter. Uh, for disk galaxies, uh, we often see a, a central dense component called bulge in the middle, and also spiral arms or bars on the disk. But after decades of study, we are still unsure, uh, even today, whether there is a bulge in the middle of our own galaxy. So today we are very happy to have a world expert on the Milky Way structure to review this subject, or relate this subject. Um, Professor Mao Zhude uh, from Tsinghua University and National Astronomical Observatory of China got his PhD from Princeton University in 1992, and then after postdoc positions at Harvard CFA and uh, Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in Germany, uh, he moved to University of Manchester as a faculty in 2000. Uh, after uh, 2000, since 2010, he has moved back to Beijing uh, to help development of astronomy in China. Uh, Professor Mao is an expert uh, on uh, gravitational lensing, especially microlensing phenomenon, uh, dynamical, dynamical modeling of galaxies, uh, as well as um, so today he will tell us uh, recent progresses on the photometric and dynamical modeling of Milky Way Mall. Let's welcome him. Thank you very much, Jianyu, uh, for, uh, for the introduction. So, uh, is this on? <coughs> okay. So uh, today I want to talk to you about uh, some of the work we have been doing. Uh, for the last few years on uh, photometric and dynamic modeling of the Milky Way. Um, my collaborators are listed here, um, some from uh, NUC, some from Shanghai. So um, as you know, cosmology in astrophysics uh, is uh, very interesting to many people. Uh, we want to probe very distant universe with increasing large telescopes. But in fact, our mother galaxy, Milky Way, is also extremely interesting. And as you will see, some of the parameters for the Milky Way are actually much worse known than the fundamental parameters uh, uh, in the universe. So because of all this uh, we have today, I want to give you a, a general introduction of the uh, observed properties of our galaxies, and then specialize uh, to the case of the Milky Way. <coughs> And then spend uh, most of my time discussing uh, photometric and dynamic models uh, of the Milky Way bar, and finish with a brief summary and uh, future outlook. So, uh, as Yenting uh, mentioned, when you look at galaxies in the universe, uh, they can uh, normally divide into two broad types. You have elliptic galaxies and then spiral galaxies. And spiral galaxies. Uh, are divided into uh, two subtypes, so-called ordinary spirals and bar spirals. Yeah, the name ordinary means uh, this may be more common than bar spirals, but in fact, uh, recent observations indicate, in particular, infrared uh, observations indicate, bar spiral galaxies are actually more common. Two-thirds of spiral galaxies may be bar. So as you will see later in my talk, the Milky Way hosts uh, a such a bar. And uh, because of our uh, proximity to stars in, our, uh, 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 in the Milky Way, we are in a much better position in many cases to understand uh, the, the structure at the center of the Milky Way. So really, uh, if we can understand the gas and uh, stellar processes in the Milky Way bar, we'll be in a much better position to understand many uh, bar galaxies in the universe. So that's one of the motivations why I want to study the bar in the center of the Milky Way. Now, if you look at a bar galaxy in the universe, uh, in the case of NGC 1300, you can see a very beautiful uh, uh, image of spirals. And then you have a fairly straight, uh, uh, a straight bar at the center of this galaxy. Now, uh, we know that uh, uh, this bar is straight. And uh, in uh, some galaxies, uh, if you have uh, 
different angular speeds at different positions of the bar, then one part will load a bit faster than the other part. So eventually, the bar will uh, not be a straight bar anymore. The fact that most bars we see in the universe are straight means, in fact, uh, the central bar structure uh, rotates with a rigid uh, angular pattern speed. So different parts rotate with the same, same angular uh, uh, velocity. So this, uh, this is why no winding up of the cent uh, straight bar uh, is observed. Now, if you look more closely at this image, you see that there are two very prominent dark stains, and you see a lot of bright, young, bluish stars, but you don't see much uh, uh, star formation uh, at the center of uh, these bar structures. Now, these uh, bright, uh, bluish stars are often uh, related to star formation uh, in these star galaxies. So you see little star formation uh, in the central part of the bar. Now, star formation not only occurs at the end of these uh, bars, in some cases, you also see uh, star formation in uh, rings. And this shows one beautiful example. So you have the central bar, and then you have a ring of star formation. Now, this ring turns out to be quite uh, large, and the diameter of this ring is of the order of 27,000 uh, light years. The, but, uh, these rings are actually very common in uh, bar galaxies. Now, in some cases, you not only see a very uh, large uh, ring uh, in the outer part of galaxies, and in some cases, you also see uh, nuclear uh, uh, rings of star formation. So for this galaxy, NGC uh, 4314, observed by Hubble, you can see the central region magnified into this uh, picture. And at the center, you see lots of uh, uh, dark regions, and these are caused by dust extinction. And then you see these beautiful uh, spots of star formation. So this is called nuclear ring of star formation. And the radius here is uh, much smaller, about 1,000 light years. So in fact, it's kind of smaller than the other rings I mentioned for the previous galaxy. Now, these rings can actually, the inner rings, or nuclear rings, and outer rings can um, occur at the same time in some galaxies. So these rings are often thought to be uh, related to resonances in these bar galaxies. So uh, bars are also very important for driving star formation uh, in spiral galaxies. And that's why one of the important reasons why we want to study uh, bar galaxies in the universe. Now, when you look at galaxies uh, uh, at face on, uh, it's very easy to, uh, fairly easy to identify by straight bars in these structures. Now, if you look at galaxies edge on, this becomes much more difficult. Uh, it becomes much more difficult to identify the central bar structure. Now, if you look, this galaxy has uh, a dark uh, band of uh, dust extinction, and then you have a central uh, uh, bulge region, which appears to be somewhat boxy, like a box. So if you look at the kinematic stars in these uh, regions, they often to be quite complex. Now, they can also appear as uh, peanut-shaped galaxies. If you look at this uh, uh, spiral galaxy, you have, uh, in fact, this galaxy is uh, located in a group of five galaxies, and three of these are shown here. Now, if you plot the uh, iso, uh, the contours of uh, uh, surface brightness of this galaxy, you find that the contours appear like this, and this resembles a uh, peanut. Uh, daily life. So this is called peanut-shaped uh, spiral galaxies. And these are thought to be uh, uh, spiral spirals built at John. So this picture also goes into the question whether uh, this sort of bar structure is caused by, by tidal interaction with these nearby uh, galaxies. So or they can be driven by uh, internal dynamical process within these uh, spiral galaxies. And it turns out the answer is most likely uh, these, are, these bar galaxies form by internal processes. And the reason is that uh, you can count the number of excess pairs around bar galaxies compared to uh, uh, the number of pairs in uh, non-bar galaxies. And it turns out you don't see much difference. So it must mean that pairs, whether they're present or not, are not very important uh, for 
driving for, for forming uh, bars <coughs> in spiral galaxies. So internal circular slow uh, evolution uh, dynamic processes are likely to be the reason why we see so many uh, bar galaxies in the universe. Now, uh, for the uh, for the last few years, at least in the Milky Way, people have been uh, very interested or rediscovered the so-called egg-shaped structure. Now, this shows uh, one uh, image for spiral galaxy NGC 4710. And if you stare at this image long enough, you see an egg-shaped structure here. So, um, I just uh, use a cross to guide your eyes. You can clearly <laughs> see, after I show you some hints, that this shows an egg-shaped structure. Now, this is uh, actually not uh, so rare in the universe. If you look at this uh, galaxy, our old friend here again, you clearly see an egg-shaped structure. So how do these things form? What are the dynamical uh, orbits associated with these uh, peculiar structures? Uh -huh. So these are the sort of questions we want to understand uh, in the case of the Milky Way. So these are also thought to be uh, related to uh, resonant orbits uh, in uh, bar galaxies, and I will show you one example later on. Now, so let me just uh, briefly summarize uh, what we know, well, or what are relevant for our uh, discussions later on. Uh, for bar galaxies. So bar galaxies are very common. Two thirds of spirals are bar. And they often sh uh, show straight bars. So it means uh, they are rotating with the same angular velocity in terms of rotation. And you have dust layers. So uh, these are uh, associated with gas streaming motions, as you will see later on. And you often see winds of star formation uh, in these bar galaxies, showing that uh, bars are really important driving uh, the very important star formation activities in galaxies. Now it's more important to, uh, more difficult to identify edge on bars, but in terms of shape, they often appear as boxy, peanut shaped, or you have uh, peculiar egg shaped structures in these galaxies. And they are quite common, uh, quite uh, complex in terms of kinematics. And I mentioned briefly that uh, they are likely uh, to have formed uh, through internal secular uh, long-term evolution uh, dynamic processes, rather than uh, encounters with other galaxies. Now, this is the general uh, introduction for bar galaxies. Now I want to specialize uh, to the case of the Milky Way. So this shows a near-infrared image from the true mass survey uh, for the Milky Way from the ground. So you see a thin disk of stars, and then you see uh, some sort of uh, uh, bulge structure at the center. And these two galaxies are large and small measuring halves. So uh, uh, our Milky Way is clearly uh, a disk galaxy. Now from space, uh, from the Kobe satellite, you see another view of this uh, uh, geometry. See, you see a thin uh, layer of uh, disk stars, and then you see a central uh, bulge component. Now when I first saw, saw this image around 1991, I didn't see anything. But uh, our department chair, our now department chair at Princeton, uh, Dave Spurgle, saw something different. He noticed that this side uh, was big, uh, is bigger than this side. And he immediately realized that this indicates at the center of the Milky Way, there is a bar. And the reason is very simple. If you have uh, an axiometric structure at the center, then the two sides should be identical to our well, uh, but this is not the case in this image here. So the reason for this uh, non asymmetry is also quite clear uh, from this uh, uh, schematic diagram. If we can view the uh, Milky Way uh, from uh, the top, you have a top-down view of the uh, galaxy, then you can see that the Milky Way, uh, from gas and other observations, the galaxy has beautiful spiral arms with the star formation regions and then at the center, you have a straight bar. Now the two sides appear uh, asymmetric because if you take two lines of sides with the same angles, uh, or oh, sorry, with the, uh, uh, the same, uh, uh, same uh, I'm not sure what's the word to use. Um, in any case, this, uh, this bar, because this side is closer to us, uh, 
The same physical length will appear larger on this side than this uh, uh, side, which is further away. So then the bar will appear as uh, asymmetric uh, on uh, the image of uh, in terms of angles. Now, in this diagram, you I also indicate the sun is not at the center of the Milky Way. Instead, it's offset from the center by about 24,000 light years. Okay? So, Milky Way shows very complex uh, structures with beautiful spiral arms and also uh, a bar uh, at the center. Now, from this image, you can ask the question, uh, uh, several questions. What are the uh, basic parameters for the central bar? And because this is one of the uh, key parameters that we want to understand uh, for the uh, uh, formation of the Milky Way. So you have a bar here. So the line of sight goes this way. What's the angle between the line of sight and the uh, major axis of the central bar structure? And what's the physical length of these, uh, this uh, central bar? In fact, people have been arguing for a number of years, how many bars do we have at the center? So we may have a, a short bar at the center and a longer bar or at different angles with the long side. And in the last few weeks, people even argue that we may have a super thin bar at, uh, at, at even a further distance from the center of the Milky Way. So you have a very complex uh, photometric structures uh, at the center of the Milky Way. This may be the case for the Milky Way. It may also happen for external galaxies. So it's very important to understand what's the case uh, for our own galaxy. Now to address these questions, we need so-called tracer population of stars. Uh, so uh, we have, uh, in astronomical uh, community, have I Lyra stars or Red Mount Giants. These stars are supposed to be more or less standard candles. So they have more or less the same luminosity. So uh, from the observed brightness, we can infer their distances. Of course, for the same luminosity, if something is further away, then it will appear fainter. So we can uh, uh, infer the distances from the observed fluxes. So I will uh, for this talk, I will concentrate on so-called red clump giants. So let me just introduce you uh, what are these stars. Now, if you uh, plot the color magnet diagram uh, for stars uh, close to the sun. So this indicates the color. This side is blue and this side is red. And this shows the brightness, luminosity of stars. <coughs> this is faint and this is bright. So you see a beautiful main sequence of stars. And then you see a clump of stars, somewhat red. So this is called a red clump. Um, uh, that is very compact in the uh, color magnet diagram. So this means that these stars actually have very small intrinsic gathers in their luminosity. Why are these stars uh, more or less standard candles? In other words, they have more or less the same luminosity. It turns out these stars are burning helium at the center of uh, these, uh, uh, at their centers. Now, from stellar evolution, it turns out that the, the mass of uh, uh, this uh, helium core that is burning uh, is more or less constant as from uh, uh, for these stars, about 0.4 uh, solar masses. So that's why uh, in this kind of color magnet diagram, they appear more or less as a very compact clump. And in fact, their, in their intrinsic luminosity is su uh, supposed to have very small scatters, around 0.1 magnitude. Um, so this is very small uh, scatter in, uh, in, as uh, in astronomy. So basically <coughs> means they are standard candles. So they have the same luminosity, uh, so we can use uh, them as uh, distance <coughs> indicators. So once we know the distance of these stars, we can use them to trace out the three-dimensional structure of the uh, bar in the uh, Milky Way. Now, if you look at the uh, at, at a particular direction towards the galactic center, you can also plot a color magnet diagram. So. Indeed, you also see this uh, uh, red clump, okay? Now this is for another field, so this is the red clump. You clearly see that this re these regions are more spread out, and this, the reason is that the bar is not, uh, you know, at a given a, a fixed distance. In fact, it has three-dimensional structures, <coughs> so the spatial extension uh, uh, makes this region uh, more spread out. 
And the other re uh, reason is that you can see these stars are distributed along a certain direction. And this is called, uh, caused by reddening of stars uh, due to the dust. So the star becomes uh, fainter and also redder. So it moves in this direction. So this side is red and this side is uh, faint. So you have this reddening uh, curve here. So this, this is the reason why these stars are spread out in this direction. Where they are uh, basically the same red uh, uh, stars we see in the solar nature. Now we can use the extension of these stars and take out the uh, extinction in the bulge to take out the spatial uh, depth uh, of the uh, galactic uh, center bar, um, its uh, spatial dimension. Um, so this is uh, uh, the method we use to map out the three-dimensional structure of the galactic bar. Now, if you ask how many uh, areas have been observed by uh, astronomers, and this is uh, the area covered by the uh, uh, one Polish American collaboration uh, uh, to observe microlensing uh, at the galactic center. So you see the galactic longitude uh, plus 10 here, minus 10 here, and latitude five, minus 5 to 5. So it covers really hundreds of square degrees uh, in this uh, particular optical survey. So in fact, the more recent uh, generation uh, surveys cover much larger regions, as you will see a few minutes on. Yeah, well, actually, the next slide. So uh, this shows a combination of three surveys, uh, so-called VVV survey, using uh, the Vista telescope uh, in the southern sky of the uh, European Southern Observatory. So these are indicated as uh, the red region. <coughs> And you have another survey called Yerkes. Yerkes survey, which are indicated as these three regions. And the blue regions are the two mass survey uh, I mentioned from the ground. So you can combine various surveys to form a map of black clump stars um, toward the center of the Milky Way. And this is what you see. Uh, these uh, white regions uh, are regions without data. So you can clearly see these two sides are asymmetric. And this shows the presence of R in a very striking way, combining these uh, three uh, uh, surveys. Now, um, what do we see in a particular field? So if we observe one particular lamp site, what do you see for these red clump stars is a color mag uh, the so-called uh, luminosity function. Basically, in each direction, you observe the uh, number counts of stars as, as a function of their luminosity or magnitude. So this shows uh, uh, the color magnet diagram, the number counts of function of the luminosity for 34 fields. <coughs> so you can integrate, for example, for each direction, of course, the luminosity function stars to obtain the total count of black clump uh, giants in this particular direction. So you, when you uh, plot all these uh, stars, what do you see? So this is what I'm not sure this come, uh, came out very well. So this shows the, uh, the contour of the uh, star counts uh, as, a fun uh, uh, as a function of longitude and latitude. So you can clearly see um, the uh, isodestic contours form fairly regular ellipses, okay? So this calls for very simple parametric models, ellipsoidal models, such as the Gaussian law or exponential law. So in these uh, Gaussian laws or exponential laws, the, the, the radius r is actually <coughs> triaxial. So it has uh, this formalism here. So x naught, y naught, z naught are the uh, three uh, axial length. So x naught is usually the main axis, and z naught is along the vertical direction, is usually the minor axis. So this, uh, this is a Gaussian model. This is one exponential model. So when you fit the, the counts of uh, red clump stars in these regular ellipses, what do we find is for these three uh, uh, axes? And this has been done uh, a few years ago by my uh, postdoc. And what we find is that uh, these uh, number counts of red clump giants <laughs> actually prefer uh, an exponential density model rather than the sort of Gaussian model people have been using uh, uh, previously. And the three uh, axes uh, have uh, these uh, numbers in terms of, of the length, 0 0.7, 0 0.3, and 0 0.25. Uh, 
So this uh, uh, central bar structure actually close to uh, being prolate, so it's, a, it's a shaped like a cigar. And the angle of the bar uh, head, uh, is oriented about 30 degrees away from the last side. So it's not the long axis of the bar is not pointed perfectly at this. Instead, it's uh, tilted slightly at 30 degrees. And this is very well constrained statistically. So this shows the bar structure at the center of the Milky Way, the short bar support. Now, when people look at the, the different large sites, and uh, I don't know whether some of you noticed, for some of the large sites, in fact, uh, the uh, counts as a function of brightness uh, show double peaks. So this shows the case for latitude of eight degrees, a longitude from minus one, minus two, all the way to uh, positive seven degrees. These uh, double peaks are only observed for very high latitude fields, like uh, eight degrees. If this number is much smaller, then you only see a single peak. And people will puzzle why this is the case. And it turns out this is just due to an X-shaped structure uh, in the, in, at the center of the Milky Way. And the reason is that, imagine we pretend this to be the case of Milky Way and you have uh, an X-shaped structure. Now, if you are at high latitude field, you ins intersect the same X-shaped structure twice. And these are the two peaks we see in the number counts. Now, you have very low latitude fields. You also see two interceptions, but uh, they are very close to together, so they merge into a single peak. And this is explains the uh, latitudal dependence of the double peak structure as a case of Milky Way. So uh, this uh, really shows the X-shaped structure very clearly uh, from the star counts of, uh, uh, of uh, the count uh, in the Milky Way. Now, in fact, it turns out that uh, the center of the Milky Way may be even more complex than I have modeled so far. So I have shown that uh, at the center of Milky Way, we may have uh, a bar uh, that's uh, close to uh, being a prolate. But a recent study by Wag, Kahart, and Portel showed that uh, in addition to this uh, uh, bar at the center, you have, may have uh, uh, thinner disk in the outer part. So this shows what we may see. The disk, the, the center of the bar, uh, if you can view it uh, edge on, so you can see a, a peanut shape uh, uh, bulge at the center, and then you have thinner structures in the outer part. In fact, they show that there may be two thin bars uh, in the Milky Way. So, really, the photometric structure at the center of the uh, galaxy uh, is very complex. So, of course, real galaxies are very complex. Um, so, you may uh, decompose into uh, many different components. Are they really meaningful? And the right question to ask is, these uh, different components, are they dynamically distinct? So they may have different uh, motions in terms of uh, stars. Whether well, that is the case, um, really turns to, uh, the page to my uh, second part of my talk, uh, the dynamical modeling of the uh, Milky Way bar. So this is the uh, picture of the Milky Way. Uh, Phonomatically, the sign is offset. So I want to introduce uh, to you the kinematics of stars in the Milky Way. How do they move? And then I will uh, discuss how do we actually model what we see in terms of uh, stellar motions. So uh, what do we observe for these stars? So uh, for each field, uh, we can use Doppler effects to measure the uh, uh, radial velocity of uh, stars. For example, for this uh, uh, Brava survey, uh, uh, champion by Michael Rich from UCLA. Uh, they observe about 8,500 uh, 8, uh, red giant stars uh, in this uh, uh, field. So they have uh, three strips in terms of uh, longitudes and then one strip along the minor axis of the bar vertically in terms of the latitude. So for each field, they have uh, a certain number of stars. So for each star, they can measure uh, its uh, radial velocity through Doppler effect. And the accuracy of the Doppler radio velocity is fairly accurate. It's of the order of five kilometers per second.